In this program, we uh, worked with the SA Wine Industry Association and the Adelaide Hills Wine Region to identify what the needs of grape growers in those regions were and design the programs to support them through the bushfire recovery. Fire started on December 20th, 2019, and very quickly became really clear that, that it was going to get out of control. It lasted pretty much the entire day and into the following day. The whole area was shut down for about five days, people not allowed in and out. The relationship with Persa began immediately after the fire. We had a, a conference pulled together within 48 hours, I think. It was really very rapid, but it was very much a partnership from the outset in the proper sense of the word. The fire entered our property and with a matter of minutes it effectively burnt out the entire vineyard. So we'd lost 100% of our Adelaide Hills vineyard. Everything had to be removed though, so all drippers, all irrigation, and most of the infrastructure was completely taken out and replaced. The Cuddly Creek fire started to our sort of northwest and it came uh, up and over the hill and we were in the direct line of the fire. We lost machinery, pump sheds, and then it took out most of the vineyard. So probably 90% of the vineyard got burnt. It is a challenge because you're dealing with so much information, you know, things you as even a business owner just need to take in. You know, for example, we'd lost the vineyard. There were grants initially to just get you back on your feet. Once you get over the, the initial trauma of what happened, assessment was the first thing, and then we set about a plan of how we're gonna go about it. We needed some support with case studies on how to address damage to vines. There's a real lack of information out there about how to address vines that have been flame damaged. The research was undertaken because there was a gap in knowledge when the fire happened there was very little publicly available information for vineyard managers to know how to respond. Vines are a very resilient plant and generally they will regrow. It's a matter of the right practices to get the best response of those vines and back into production as soon as possible. You know, being a, a relatively small industry and quite close knit, there were a lot of community gatherings where people in the same situation were got together and Persa was addressing the issues and really consulting with those affected as to what would be the best way forward. There have been a lot of parts to what we've done. There have been a lot of different grant opportunities. Uh, so there was a clear up grant, there was a grant for smoke taint testing, and then the biggest piece has been a grant that permits us to support people through different courses. And so the response has been excellent, first of all, that I think everybody in our region who needed support was able to access something. We had lots of sliding door moments after the fire. There were lots of uh, things we could have done, we could have sold, but we decided to stay and, and reinvest. And this gave us an opportunity to, to look at our, our wine brand and to turn our tractor storage shed into a cellar door. Personally, from our point of view, you know, we probably wouldn't have been able to make those decisions as quickly as we did and get the work done as quickly as we did without that funding. The benefits to the industry is that we now have clear information available for vineyard managers for any future bushfire events that impact vineyards. With the videos that we've produced and the papers that are being written, there'll be an information resource available to vineyard managers, both in Australia and internationally, that will help them understand their best practices going forward. The region and Persa have always had a pretty good working relationship. The fire, I think, is actually brought us even closer together and other regions I think we can all learn about how we can bounce off Persa to try and help the wider industry because at the end of the day that's all we're trying to achieve. Having done it, there is a level of resilience that you build. There's also, you know, trauma and some stress attached to that that, you know, I think everyone has had to work through. But like everything, you sort of think, well, you know, if I was capable of surviving that and I want to continue to do it, then, you know, I'm up for the challenge. It's not just about recovering from the, the flames or recovering even from the smoke. It's about building resilience ongoing. And so being able to think really creatively about what that looks like for our region and how we ensure that we've got businesses and individuals who are better able to withstand a disaster like this in the future. They've not only given us the opportunity to do that, but they've helped us to think about recovery like that.